uh, Eric, uh, right here in the front. Uh, congratulations on the win. Uh, what's your emotions right now after finally getting past the Darren Stewart chapter? Of your life? Um, man, it's not really so much the fight, but man, I've spent the last six months away from the family. Been in two camps back to back. Uh, missed my anniversary out here training, and uh, man, anything less than a win would have, you know, couldn't have it. So I think it was one-one going into that third round, and uh, I knew I had to have that round. So. Uh, once I got on top, I knew I wasn't going anywhere. And uh, it feels good to not only take home two checks, but to validate everything that I've done uh, all the time away from home, the family, and uh, miss things. So you know, it was really imperative for me to go out there and get this win tonight. The actual fight, is that how you envisioned it playing out, uh, especially after uh, feeling him for at least a round in the pre uh, previously? Um, well, man, the game plan was to go in there and wear him down, you know, be heavy on him. Um, I definitely could have worked more in the clinch, I think. Anytime the ref separates you, you know, that's definitely a, an output issue, obviously. So, um, but I think the game plan worked. I think he was pretty tired going into that third round. And that's how whenever we started wrestling, I got on top. He wasn't able to, to you know, scramble up and get up, which he's been able to do in the past. Even the first time that we fought, um, I took him down. He was able to get back up. But I knew in the third round I would have the cardio uh, advantage. Physically, uh, did he feel any different in there, especially at, at 205 pounds? At media day, he said his cardio would be in his advantage at this weight class. And honestly, I thought that he felt way stronger at uh, 80, 85. Um, I don't know what his what he's been doing between now and then and what he did before our first fight, but in the clinch, I thought he, uh, in the first fight, I thought he was way stronger. Um, and that may have been nerves. I don't know. You know, maybe he was fighting it a little bit more. Um, I don't know, but I, I thought that uh, you know that he he felt better in the uh, first fight. And at media day, you were talking about your life after football, and then in MMA, like being a janitor and all your old jobs. And it seems like a lot of fans online really connected with that and gravitate gravitated towards that. This week, did anyone any fans reach out? Or did you any see any more outpouring of fans uh, after that? Yeah, interview? absolutely. I, I, like I said, you know, I think that everybody thinks that I just decided to stop playing football and just go fight in the UFC. And that's definitely not the path that, of how I got here. So I think it just kind of opened people's eyes that, man, I went from being a, a really good, you know, uh, uh, college football player to, you know, to being a white belt at something again, being brand new and learning a whole new skill set and literally fighting my way uh, to get to the top of the organization. You see Charles Woodson is in the building? Is he? Yeah. Oh, man, where is he at? He, he, he was sitting in the crowd. Back here? Yeah. He was sitting oh, they showed him on the TV. Man, I got hollered at him, man. That guy is football royalty. What's up, man? You're actually in kind of a unique position where not only have you fought with fans and without them, you actually fought the same guy once without fans, once with fans. Do you think that had any impact on the fight itself? Um, Maybe, you know. Um, I don't know, dude. I, I feed off the fans. I love the energy, especially, you know, when uh, Bruce Buffer announced I'm fighting out of Scottsdale, they just erupted. And, uh, dude, that's one of the things that I miss the most about, you know, even competing in football is the roar of the crowd. Every time there's a solid shot landed, uh, anytime there's a good exchange, you know, you're fighting in the city where you train at or live at or you're from, man, having the crowd behind you is a big push for you. You mentioned about the output issue in the clinch. Do you think that maybe that's some of the something to do with the fact that you said at the beginning of this you just needed to win, right? So maybe you were so comfortable in holding him there that you maybe didn't feel the urge to throw that out. No, absolutely not, man. I try to finish the fights, and you know I've been on the wrong end of some decisions before, you know. So I don't ever ever want to go to a decision. So man, of course I'm trying to finish the fight, but man, not every fight is going to be two minutes of cloud of dust and, and a knockout. You know, sometimes you have to win the war of attrition. Sometimes you have to weigh on them, be heavy on them. And then when your opportunity comes, there's your chance for the knockout. There's your chance for the TKO. There's your chance for a submission. Or in this case, here's a chance for a 10 8 third round in, in, in the deciding round. Congrats, man. Thank you. Eric, over here. You said that he was not as heavy at um, 205 as he was at 185. Did you, when you flipped him, like when you reverse position the first round, is that when you knew, like, oh, I got this? Because it seemed like you did that rather easy, um, and then your confidence grew from that. It's, it's not that he was heavier or lighter. I just feel like that he was stronger at 185. And maybe he was fighting the clinch. Like I, like I said, I don't know how he's been training before before the first fight or before this fight. But, um, 
Yeah, dude, I know in the third round that cardio is going to be on my side. I know where I'm at mentally. I know what I've done to get here. And now I, I'm not going to let any more of these fights slip out of my hands in the in the third round. Do, do you take anything to take back down to 185 from this fight or just kind of separate things, separate weight class? Man, um, I don't know. Each fight has a life and history of its own. You know, um, the next guy I fight, whether it be at uh, 85 or 205, you know, there's going to be um, – holes in their game to exploit. It's going to be a different fight. They're not all the same. It's, I think it's more opponent-based than it is weight class-based. But um, I do like 185 better. Um, I think I compete better at middleweight. Obviously, the weight cut's way easier at 205. But, man, I think that's what kind of makes a difference in these fights. You know, at 85, man, I'm dialed in for nine weeks, eight, nine weeks at a time. So by the time I, uh, you know, I, even when I leave the gym, you know, I'm thinking about my diet. And when I'm thinking about my diet, it kind of is like, oh, maybe, you know, I start thinking about the fight. And I just play the fight over and over and over and over in my head, uh, you know, when I'm sitting in bed at night. But at 205, I'm not hungry, you know. I'm not, there's like no, um, I'm not sacrificing anything. So when I go home, man, you know, I'm watching Netflix, reading a book, or not really too much thinking about the fight, if that makes sense. So um, at 85, it's like constantly, always and forever on my mind, the fight. So I play it hundreds and thousands of times before I actually fight. And final question for me, of course you're a motivated athlete, but after going through this week, you got the pop when they say you're from Scottsdale, getting the win, getting your hand raised, and people f kind of feel the, your background. How much does this inspire you to push on and be an inspiration for others? Not that you're not motivated, but does it give you an extra fire after going through this week and in it with the hand raise? Yeah, man, you know, um, you know, Darren's a fighter too. You know, I knew that he'd come out, he'd be tough and, uh, you know, uh, whenever you win, it's easy to be motivated, you know, because, you know, you win. It kind of validates everything that you did to get that win, whether, you know, whether you what you did or didn't do to, to get that win. So I think sometimes in the loss is where you kind of have to soul, soul search, figure out what you did. Because when you win, it's like everything that you did was was right, you know. But if you lose, like, what did I do wrong kind of thing? Yeah, boy. You kind of. So How are you, man? Yeah. Was going to ask you is the pathway for you to title contention is that more at 185 or 205? For sure, at, at middleweight. You know, I'm down to compete at 205, but man, those guys at the top. I think it's a stature thing. You know, I'm only six one with like a 77 inch reach. Those guys at 205 or you know six four, six five. You know, uh, probably 230, two, you know 235 cutting down. So um, it's it's just a stature thing. You know, at uh, middleweight. They're all, you know, six one except for the champ, you know. But they're all like six foot, six one, six two, and uh, you know, stature wise, it's a better fight for me. Is fight ready going to be your home long term? Is that solidified? Oh uh, man, look at my last two performances. You know, I think there's no doubt that the progress and progression that I've made in my skill set all around is undeniable. And that's only, you know, 18 weeks. You know, think about a year or two from down the line. You know, I'm just going to continue to grow, get better. Uh, Dave Zawain, you know, like I said, I'm just a thoroughbred. You know, Eddie, uh, Santino, my corner, Ray, uh, Dave Zawain, man, these guys put everything together. And, uh, man, I just followed the process. They, Chad E.K., the strength and conditioning coach. I think even at 205, this is the best shape uh, that I've ever been in. So, man, I'm just going to keep trusting my career to those guys, let them uh, guide my career, and then, you know, I just show up and fight, and it's easy for me. Congrats. Thank you. Eric, you talk about um, oh, yeah. in the third round on your right. right. I'm talking to you. Okay. You talk about in the third round how you had to push, and not only did you push, you really actually dominated that round. Um, is that something different maybe that you've learned over losing tough decisions? Yeah, you know, um, before, you know, I just go out there and try and knock people out. You know, swing for the fences kind of thing, and that's not that's not the way to fight. You know, you have to be patient, choose your opportunities, pick and choose your opportunities, and, and what you and what you're going to do, when you're going to do it. Be more calculated, and I think that that's something that uh, these guys standing behind you have really helped me with. It doesn't have to be toe to toe, you know, slugfest. You know, one that's not conducive to a long career. Two, you're gonna eventually someone's going to catch you. So. Um, I think being able to, to mix it up, wrestle, uh, separate and fire, um, 
and mix the distances and ranges is, is the, the big piece of my game that, uh, that I've been missing. Because I really don't think that there's too many guys that are more athletic than me, stronger than me. Um, and they're also maximizing my speed, which I think was the biggest attribute that I was deficient in. So, man, it's all kind of coming together for me. Yeah, I've long since said this. Your coach, Santino, probably knows. I think he's the best corner man mid-fight out of anybody I've ever seen. Does that help you when you come down into the second and third rounds to know that you have somebody to be able to honestly tell you where you stand in the fight? Yeah, they, they were honest. You know, uh, he told me that I lost the first round. Wasn't sure about the second round, but I, you know, probably thought that I won and uh, that I had to go out there and, and, you know, try to get a finish in that third round. And I think that third round was probably a 10-8. Um, maybe, I think. I don't really know, but. Um, I didn't, really didn't listen too much uh, today, you know, um, to be honest. You know, I could hear them telling me to separate and fire, but I could just feel his energy just, you know, dropping. And then that third round, he took me down. And as soon as we started wrestling, I just felt, you know, him kind of not give up, but he didn't have – he gave it up easy. He gave up the reversal real easy, and he wasn't really trying to get up like he was. So, um, like I said, everything is kind of coming together for me and. You know, now I can be the, the triple threat, striking, grappling, and eventually I'm going to get a submission one of these days. Well, congratulations. Thank you so much. Congratulations on your winning. And uh, your life is testament to achievement and commitment. What is your message for all those trying to get there? Um, I mean, you know, that, that's my career is kind of like it's life, you know. One door shut, so I had to kick open another door. I wasn't contempt and ready to – you know, spend the next 40 years of my life sitting behind a desk making somebody else a bunch of money. You know, literally fighting for my money has put me in a position where, man, I could, I could re quit and retire now and I would be financially uh, straight forever, you know, for my, you know, me and my family. So um, I just try to have, I had to follow my heart and what made me happy. There were plenty of people, including my own family, who, you know, I don't know why you want to fight. You're going to get your teeth knocked out. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. It's so stupid. But man, I just kind of, you know, shut those people out of my life, you know, girlfriends, family members. And, uh, you know, we'll see who has the last laugh. And my final question is, uh, when will you like to fight again? I'm definitely going to take the summer off, you know, uh, spend some much needed time with the wife and kids and stuff, travel, you know, do some camping maybe. And, uh I don't know, uh, late October, early November, I think would be a good time for me to get in there. Very good. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. What belt are you in jiu-jitsu? Brown belt. Do so you think a submission win, you get the black belt? <laughs> Man, I think I'm so far from a black belt. Um, I only ask because I can remember when Woodley got a submission, they presented him the black belt inside the uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know, dude. Um, I really don't put the gi on too much anymore. Um, I love the gi. Don't get, don't get me wrong, but... Uh, Man, I'm training for MMA. You know, you really don't wear a gi and whatnot. But, you know, the gi is fun and whatnot. And eventually one day I will um, get my black belt once I kind of recommit myself to, to jiu-jitsu. But, uh, man, don't make any mistake, man. Your boy, a purple belt world champ. So, you know, y'all get right. I got jits. Yeah, Eric, um, you have a lot of fans, obviously, in Arizona. You've been training out here, you know, for the past six months. Is Arizona almost starting to feel like a new home for you in a way? Yeah, I, I love it out here. Um, I keep coming back. Um, the housing market's kind of crazy out here. There's like no houses available and whatnot. But uh, and I would like to eventually, uh, you know, buy a house out here because I plan on fighting for, you know, quite a while uh, still. So, you know, these Airbnbs can kind of get expensive after a while. So, you know, I kind of need to invest in myself. And, and eventually I'll find one that's not, you know, a million dollars. I ain't there yet, but uh, working my way towards it. Appreciate you guys.